Hello everyone, I'm Rodney from TheGameMan.com and today I'm having a look at something pretty darn spectacular when it comes to a home network attached storage device. This is the QNAP TAS-268 and it is their two bay model. They do have a one bay and that one is the 168. Aside from it being cheaper, it's virtually identical. So what makes this so spectacular? Well, it comes with a dual core processor, two gigabytes of memory. You can do 4K playback on it as well. And the icing on the cake is two operating systems, their own QTS and Android. It comes in this great looking, very informative box. Now let's see what's inside. It's packaged very well. The NAS itself is sandwiched between two pieces of styrofoam and it's in this plastic bag. Also on the front is a quick setup guide included as well is a power cord, power adapter, a quick installation guide, a category 5e network cable, and four plastic drive rails for installing three and a half inch drives, as well as a wireless mini keyboard with touchpad, a guide for it, and a charging cable. Now let's have a closer look. This thing is pretty darn sweet. At the top left are status LEDs. At the very left, there's an on-off switch, charging port, and here, tucked away, is the USB receiver, and of course, this gets connected into the NAS. First, let's go through the features and specifications, then I'll have a closer look at it, and finally, the software. So it comes with an ARM 1.1 GHz dual-core processor. As I mentioned, two gigabytes of memory, it is DDR3. And by the way, the flash memory is four gigabytes. Now you can fit two three and a half inch serial ATA drives, but check their site for compatibility. As for RAID management, you can do RAID 0, RAID 1, JBOD, or just a bunch of disks, as well as a single disk. And it has one gigabit LAN port, as well five USB ports, and one of those is a USB 3 port. Also, it comes with a buzzer for, you know, warning you if there's anything wrong. Now, it is a pretty small unit overall, measuring in at 187 by 90 by 125 millimeters. And the net weight is 0.7 kilograms. The gross is 1.88. Of course, that's going to vary. It depends on, you know, the hard drives that you install. And the operating temperature is from zero to 40 degrees Celsius. Now, one great thing about these network attached storage devices is how little power they consume in comparison to a full-fledged computer system. This thing, when you have two two terabyte drives installed, only on standby consumes 6.05 watts and while in operation just 13.24 watts. Oh and now that we're on the topic of power, the external power adapter is 60 watts. Now I'm going to rocket through the software specifications. The operating system is their own embedded Linux QTS. The supported clients would be Windows XP, Windows Server 2003 onwards, Apple, Mac, OS X and onwards, Linux and Unix. Supported browsers include Chrome, IE 10 Plus, as well as Firefox and Safari. Of course, you've got multi-language support here with this. The file system, the internal is ext4. The external, though, is ext4, ext3, as well as ntf. S, FAT32, and HFS+. Plus. Now, I'm not going to detail everything about all the different categories here, but I'll list most of it on the screen. As for networking, you can do THCP IP version 4, proxy client, proxy server, DHCP server, and much more. When it comes to security, you can do network access protection with auto blocking, SSH, Telnet, you can do SSL as well, have it alert you via, you know, email and whatnot. As for storage management, as I mentioned before, you can do RAID 0, RAID 1, JBOD, or a single disk, as well as bad block scans and smart bad block recovery and so on. As for power management, you can do standby modes and schedule to power on and power off, as well as a few other features. Now, you've got access right management on this, you know, import and export users and, you know, 
you can adjust the quota for the users and you know allow certain permissions with regards to the folder so that's awesome and it comes with my qnap cloud service which gives you your own personal cloud and sharing along with that as well as a free host name registration auto router configuration web-based file management and so on as well as qsync so you can sync files and share files and set all kinds of different policies and there's lots of web administration options like for example personalizing the desktop smart fan control resource monitor comprehensive logs you can restore everything to default if you want to and q manager which is a mobile app for remote system monitoring and management and when it comes to this being a server well you can turn this into a file server ftp server file station backup station cloud drive sync station photo station, music station, iTunes server, video station, DLNA server, a download station, Android station, and you've got a ton of different mobile apps. You've got QFile, QManager, QMusic, QGet, and VMobile. Now let's have a closer look. The overall styling, appearance, and build quality on this is quite nice. The exterior is pretty much all plastic. They have their logo stamped in either side and at the front you'll find status leds here for usb network and hard drive activity here's the power button just down from that is an sd card reader this is a usb one touch copy button and a usb3 port at the back is a reset button four usb2 ports an hdmi port a one gigabit lan port and here's where the power adapter gets connected and at the bottom are information stickers four rubber feet and a single screw so you can install the drives inside the unit oh and it does come with a fan and the exhaust is at the bottom on both sides. Installing drives is a snap. First, remove the screw that's on the bottom of the unit, then slide the cover off, insert the drives, make sure you push them all the way in, then use these drive rails to secure the drives. And by the way, each one is labeled and you insert it on the outside like so. Now put the cover back on and secure it with the screw. Now there's a few ways to set this NAS up and if you recall there was a sticker on the NAS for quick setup. You can go ahead and pretty much in any browser in the address bar type in start.qnap.com and then enter the cloud key or you can go ahead and scan the QR code that you'll find on that sticker with your iPhone, iPad or Android device. Now you can alternatively download QFinder that is their utility for setup. It will find the device once you've found it, double click on it, it will open your default browser and from there go through the installation wizard. Okay, so let's have a quick look here at the QTS operating system. At the top left, you've got some shortcuts here for the application and system. This is just the name of the NAS at the top right. You can go to my cloud if you've set that up. Background tasks, external drives, if you have any notifications. These are the options for your profile, wallpaper, change your password, and other miscellaneous options. Here we've got change password, restart, shut down, log out, and about. You can quickly search for something if you want to. Just help, change the language, and you can change the way that everything is displayed here on the desktop and on the desktop you can see that they have a few different shortcuts but you can add as many as you want at the bottom left is the time and date and at the bottom right you'll notice that there's a little bit of a resource monitor here showing you exactly what's going on with the system statuses on you know hard drive health and whatnot Oh, and at the bottom, they have these shortcuts to all of the mobile apps. As you can see, QFile, QManager, QMusic, QPhoto, QVideo, QNotes, QGet, VMobile, and QRemote. As well as a shortcut to the QNAV utilities, and you can give them feedback if you wish. Now, the QTS operating system really has a lot to offer, and I'm briefly going to be touching on each component of it. Remember, I will be flying through this, so if you want to find out more information on it, you can visit their website, or you can just pause the video. So within the system settings, there are general settings within here. You've got system administration, time, daylight savings time, code, page, password strength, and login screen. Within the 
storage manager you've got an overview of what's going on you can see more information here about the disks and the volumes within network you've got TCP IP proxy DDNS service got different security options hardware you can set up the buzzer a smart fan here within power you've got power recovery and a power schedule that you can set up there are different notifications of course remember to update the firmware and as well be sure that this is checked automatically check you know for a new version that's important here are the backup and restore options you can attach of course external storage to this a USB printer or a UPS an uninterrupted power supply system status you've got system information network status system service hardware information and a resource monitor you can see the CPU usage memory usage disk usage bandwidth usage and system logs within privacy settings you've got the users you can set up user groups here are the shared folders of course you've got advanced permissions and as well you can set up quotas here are the network services win mac and nfs set up an FTP telnet SSH SNMP service discovery there's the recycle bin and QSync of course you can download this app for you know your device and sync everything within applications Got the station manager or the photo station, music station, file station, download station, backup sta server here, all kinds of different options for that. iTunes server, DLNA media server, got the multimedia area here, media library, media folder, web server. SQL server, system log server, antivirus. I would recommend enabling this and going go ahead and just check for updates. Select that as well. TFTP server and the Android station. Add a keyboard and mouse to this and connect it into a display and bam, you've got a mini computer system and even better yet, an Android box. Make all those connections, turn the unit on, log into the Android operating system, add your Google account and then of course download your favorite apps. Now if you're thinking about listening to music, watching movies and TV shows, Kodi is awesome. I prefer Plex personally, sometimes I use both of them, but in any case you have that flexibility. Now this is actually a NAS that I would personally select for my own home use, and there's many reasons why, but mainly it has major bang for the buck, meaning it's affordable, not going to break the bank, but has tons of features. I mean, you throw a keyboard, a mouse, and a display at this, and you've got a mini computer system, or if you use the Android OS, an Android box, that is extremely powerful and useful. Without a doubt, this is a 100% kick-ass product. Until next time, take care. Well, that's it, but I hope you enjoyed the review. And if you think this and other videos that I produce are great, please like them and subscribe to the channel. Also, your comments are very welcome. And if you have any questions, let me know.